What's up, YouTube? We are now going through a portfolio critique for a guy named Shane Matula, who has reached out and asked how he can differentiate himself when he's trying to get that first job. So we're gonna look through his book and try to help the guy out. Stay tuned. As we land on your book, we're gonna be a little bit nitpicky because I think that's very important when it comes to positioning yourself when you're going against all these other people trying to get that job. And so the first thing I would say is be a little careful with your font choices. You've got a lot of different things going on. You got some serifs, you got some sans serifs. Your navigation is kind of this almost old school font, but then you've got more uh, contemporary fonts that you have you know, listed below each campaign. So just try to find some consistency and just work on your own personal branding. So I think personal brand is something that becomes extremely important when you're trying to differentiate yourself. Kind of dig deeper into that. What is your logo? What are your colors? What are the fonts that represent you? And so I think once you do that exploration, you'll be able to infuse that into your book. So let's go into about to learn a little bit more about you. Uh, Great, so you were the guy from the painting. That's really that's really interesting, that's cool. Uh, hello, my name is Shane. I grew up on a farm on the South Texas coast. I know what it means to get up early and work hard. I know what it means to get the job done. I also know what it means to have a dream. My dream is to be an art director. So I've studied design and advertising. I've mastered some skills and I'm chomping at the bit to learn more. My dad has no idea what an art director is or does. He wants me to come home and pull on my boots and round up cattle. He wants me knee deep in the family business. That's where you come in. You can help me set my shovel aside. I'm ready to bust my butt for you and your company as an intern or a full-time art director. I'll save your time. I'll make you money. I'll grab your communications brief by the horns and produce thought-provoking work. And if I step in anything along the way, I won't track it inside, promise. I love that bio. That already differentiates yourself. You're the farming art director, which is cool. You can farm ideas, you can do all sorts of stuff. So interesting ways to relate it. I would actually bring some of that potentially into your personal brand. So don't be afraid to do that. You've kind of joked around and played with it. So I think it's an interesting angle and it will differentiate yourself. It has already differentiated yourself in my eyes. Uh, just by reading your bio and you know the name of this video will probably have something to do with that because that's you know something interesting and unique about you and where you came from in your roots and you should hold on to those roots they've established who you are and then they can help you moving forward um, in that next step of your journey so keep cranking Shane love that bio let's get into the work so the first one is called Lego play box station Creativity is something children have an abundance of. They're naturally artistic. That is until schools kill creativity. Lego fosters creativity and is synonymous with bringing kids' creations and imaginations to life. Kids are naturally artistic. Playbox is the opportunity for kids to experience their artistic expression in a way that encourages even more creative play. That's why we created our interactive Playbox station. Kids bring their art to the Lego store and enter it into the Playbox station. Anything they submit will come to life as instructions and Lego bricks are distributed from the program. The kids recreate the world in their own eyes, right down to their imaginary friends. Playbox can even be experienced digitally through our Lego Reality app. With the help of virtual reality, kids use a Lego Ocular to further explore their creations. Lego Ocular. I like it. Cool. Oh, oh, look at that little logo animation skills. That's cool. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I, I love the idea. I think the thought is definitely there. I think it's fun, it's playful. It'd be, make for a very interesting event. So I really do like it a lot. I think the way you've made the branding and things like that work for you as well is very playful and fun, just like the brand. So you're very much on, you know, brand tone. The thing I would challenge you with are a couple of things. So for the video itself, the production gets a little, little okay. There's a lot of times where you're doing a slow zoom and then you stop. I would just let your zooms zoom into the next thing very fluidly rather than that harsh stop because that harsh stop just, you kind of messes with the viewer and it, it makes them pause and it feels a little bit less professional. The other thing I would say is try to get new voiceover talent. That I don't know if that was you. Sometimes I had to do my own VO too and 
it didn't always come out the best. So just work on that, you know, that voiceover and make sure that that's coming together nicely and very professional. And then it would feel a little less student booky if you if you tackled those two things. The last thing I would tell you is how can you explode this pass, this bringing in uh, your idea into the stores? And I know you went to the Oculus thing that was showing a nice departure, but how can people learn about these things? So it's great that you have the Lego Ocular thing and it's great that you have these events in store, but how are people hearing about it? So whether that's a poster series, billboards, what are those things that are going to prompt people to go take action and go do your very inspiring interactive uh, play box things? But you know, I like the core idea. I think there's definitely great thinking there. And so for that, I will give it a, we'll go a 7.5 out of 10. All right, so next we have Lund Swedish Pancakes. So this was a packaging ass assignment. So here was the packaging before. And then here is the beautiful packaging after. In Sweden, trespassing is tolerated, just not during breakfast. Swedens are known for not bragging. It's because their mouths are full. Swedes drink six cups of coffee per day. Blame it on the pancakes. Uh, I think it's interesting. I like that you didn't just take on a branding assignment, but you're like, I'm gonna do a little print series campaign too to go along with it. I think your color scheme and way you treated your type is very nice. I think everything's super clean and it's definitely contemporary and you know, it's cutesy, it's fun. And so I'm definitely a fan of it. But yeah, you're doing some interesting things even past the packaging. So even this little brochure piece that lives within your packaging. So I think that's really cool too. I'm sure the price point of something like their old packaging and your new packaging is probably significantly different just cause you go to like a tin and stuff like that. but. Not necessarily the worst. If you're trying to elevate their brand, if you're really trying to differentiate them on the aisle, and if you have to pay an extra buck or something for this premium product, that might be worth it to somebody. I think it was interesting that you threw a curveball by showing the before, before you got into any of your work. And you know, I appreciate a difference in story. It keeps me on my toes. So like the Swedish pancakes, and I would give this branding a, let's go eight out of 10. We'll go eight out of 10 on that one. A gig poster for the Canadian indie emo band Stars, fusing their two albums, Sad Robot and Set Yourself on Fire into one design, communicates their dark personality in a lighter tone. They need it, trust me. Okay, so I guess my thing here is, you know, it's one poster and it takes up a whole, you know, square on your grid. This is something that I would put in the design section of your book and put all a lot more design work in that area. When it stands on its own, it's not as strong because you know a creative director is gonna click on three things in your book and if this is one of the three things they choose, they're not gonna see that big idea of thinking. So I would ax it until you can really, you know, put a lot of design work together into one spot. Just a few little tips on, on the illustration and everything. So your white line work around your robot, I would thicken it, at least thicken your outer stroke. That will just make it really uh, feel a little bit more elevated. Typically thin strokes, I like to try to stay away from. Either I go flat design with no you know, outlines or I go very thick um, on some outlines and just differ your line weight a little bit. That differing your line weight from thick to thin can really give you a kind of a more stylistic look. Saturday, July 25th, 8 p.m. at Emo's. I would mess with that font a little bit, do something more interesting with it. As it stands now, it just looks like you slapped that on the poster. And so I feel like it actually takes away from it. So I know that's very important information to be on the poster uh, so people can attend the show. But yeah, just do something a little bit more creative with it. It 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 just feels a little, a little thrown on there and pieced together at the moment. But this by itself, not a big fan of. If it you know hits a design section, I'm more of a fan. For that reason, as it stands now, I would give this a, we'll go four out of 10. All right, next we got some Doritos. Doritos develops a new flavor and needs to launch big. Our idea, take advantage of the current political climate. Via social media, consumers try to be the first to learn the new flavor and gain VIP admission to a star-studded Doritos launch party, where celebrity guests, known for their relation to conspiracies, are in attendance. Think movies like Inception, Adjustment Bureau, Jason Bourne, etc. Redacted Doritos is born. Subtle clues on the bag 
Government conspiracy videos and embedded promos on social media offer clues. In today's world, we're hungry for the truth. Until we get it, we'll keep eating Doritos. All right, interesting. Overall, I would just try to get new voiceover talent. It just really would up and make it feel more professional. What I thought was interesting is you led with the get and then you went into the conspiracy thing. And I think you need to flip that. So I think the conspiracy thing is what leads to that launch event. I think you hinted at the prize and the end goal too quickly. I think if you talked about the conspiracy theories, the you know clues on social, the clues on the bag thing first, I think that's very much more intriguing and I think that's where the idea lives. And so I would start there and then say, oh, and by the way, when you figure it out, you get to go to this launch party with celebrities and whatever. So I would just, just do a little reversal there because you know someone might get through that first 15 seconds and be like, oh, okay, it's an activation. There's no idea here. And then they get to the idea second and some may not make it that far. So you know, hit them in the head with that idea first. Again, like your Lego campaign, what are other elements that you can bring into this fold? What are interesting print ads that are very conspiracy theory like? Do you go to conspiracy theory museums like the JFK Museum or something of that nature and do an in interesting activation there? I love the idea of surrounding it around conspiracies. I just think you need to push a little bit harder and a little bit further for it to become a 360 degree interesting campaign. So I like the idea. There's a nice little insight there. Just make sure you exploit it even more uh, and make it really interesting. But overall, I would give Doritos a eight out of 10 for the idea uh, mostly. And because I feel like it has lots of legs, I just want you to really push it into other, you know, other elements and other mediums. Airbnb experiences, there's more you can do with Airbnb than just booking a room. You can book once in a lifetime experiences when you are traveling, such as learning how to walk on hot coals, cliff diving in the Pacific. We create a platform where you can explore these experiences from around the world within the Airbnb community. You lose a little bit of the Airbnb brand branding as you go through. So go to Airbnb's website, really dive into their brand and try to make the experience look a lot like something you know, that Airbnb would do. For instance, on this front screen, when it says click your region to explore, it doesn't look like Airbnb. So remember that every page of that website should at least, even if it doesn't have the Airbnb logo necessarily, should still give you that same tonality and make you feel like it's an Airbnb product. So uh, I like the idea and insight. I'm just not as big of a fan of the execution, though I think it can get there. So I'll give this Airbnb stuff a 6.5 out of 10. Last, we are going to Fender Rock and Roll World Tours. Cool. The 
that's pretty cool. Um, I, I really, I, I like the insight and idea there, and it's something I would definitely use. Basically, the gist of it is you can go through the archives of rock and roll in person and really experience where all these, you know, stomping grounds were for all of these different artists, and then you can watch video from your device of people playing in those particular venues. So. Yeah, really cool idea. It's interesting you, ch you chose Fender to do so. I would love to see a little bit more of why that is. Why could Fender do that over a Gibson? You can definitely always own something as a brand, but when you can show why you're the only brand that can be doing this, that's even cooler. If you can establish that rooted history of Fender into the rooted history of music, that could be even more of a tie-in to help you you know, close that gap. But no, I really, I really think that idea and insights there. So your ideation skills, Shane. Oh, sorry, that one I would give a eight out of ten for the idea. Shane, your your insights and your thinking is really good across the board. I think there's just some slight tweaks you can make to the way you display those ideas and blow those ideas out to be a little bit larger. That will really separate you amongst the other people, which is kind of what you're looking to do. What's your personal brand? What's the Shane Matula logo? Is it this type? I don't know. To me, I think the more interesting thing is, is the farmer angle. You're the farmer art director and you're there to farm good ideas and get your feet dirty and hit the ground running. So I would lean into that a little bit and you know, you don't have to go over the top with it. It can just be a subtle nod. I think that would help you in dividends. And I think if you just made a few little tweaks, you've shown a lot of promise through your design work and through your you know creative ideas so i think with just a little bit of tweaks you can get there and i wish you the best of luck shane see you next time